since I don't believe that a God took a piece of soil and breathed into it and blew on it and gave it life and fashioned it into what we call man and woman today or man I should say and then took from that man his rib and fashioned that rib into what we would call a woman how did we get here it's a very important subject um, I'm going to give you information according to the um, ancient records of the Sumerians of which they got their information from the group of extraterrestrials that created us whether you believe it or not we were an experiment humans were an experiment of extraterrestrial beings you've heard me say this in other videos but in this video I'm going to go into how we got here briefly because I only have 15 minutes um, I choose the Sumerian story for a reason I choose the Sumerian story of creation and how we got here because from my vantage point in my viewpoint the Sumerians have the one of the most ancient stories not the most ancient but one of the most ancient stories but one of the most detailed and documented stories documenting exactly how humans got here and also the Sumerian what you would call mythos or stories the Sumerian mythology and mythology means story the Sumerian mythology or story goes back further than the Bible than the Quran and many of your holy books um, this information was discovered back in the 70s I believe or was unearthed back in the 70s on clay tablets and it's several of them called the Enuma Elish the Gilgamesh, Ep the Gilgamesh epics the Atrahasis the tablets of Enki um, the tales of Ishtar these are all different what you would call scriptures but different stories that were discovered and written on clay tablets in, in cuneiform and cuneiform is a uh, written language that the Sumerians used to write one of the oldest forms of writing believe it or not and um, I use this story because it's very ancient and it documents this information very well as far as why humans came here and how we got here um, it all started off according to the Sumerian tablets with uh, two brothers um, you had Enki Enlil and Anu actually three individuals Anu which means the Most High Enki which means one who came to earth and Enlil which means one of the heavens and Enki actually came here he was sent on a mission according to these texts and tablets from his father and I'm paraphrasing this information I mean you can read these tablets for yourself and know that I'm not making this up but according to these tablets Enki was sent here uh, by his father in the council on this planet hundreds of thousands of years ago prior to your modern version of what we would call humans or homo sapiens was sent here hundreds of thousands of years ago on a mission to get gold so that he could take this gold from South Africa at the time he was sent here from his home planet which was not Nibiru, Nibiru was not his home planet um, Nibiru, let me go into that because many of you have heard of Nibiru Nibiru was not the uh, Anunnaki's home planet Nibiru is a spacecraft and there's a craft that they use to move around the universe these Anunnaki actually lived in various different star constellations across the um, universe and I won't go into here but namely Sirius the Sirius star constellation is one of the main constellations that they were inhabitants of and they inhabited the Sirius star constellation with other beings 
because there are more beings than just what you would call the Anunnaki. But this group, the Anunnaki, decided that their home planet, which they came from, which was in another galaxy, some say the 19th galaxy, um, it was in their home galaxy called Elysium. Some people call it Elysium. And this galaxy, um, its ozone layer, or this planet that they were from within this galaxy, because they were from a certain planet within this galaxy called the planet of sustenance. And this planet's ozone layer was depleting because of certain reptilian beings that were living on the planet and destroying the planet at the time. So what the Anunnaki did, the Anunnaki's are the chiefs of the intergalactic confederation. And they decided to uh, search the universe for gold. And they found out that our planet Earth was abundant in gold. So originally they sent Inki, which was one of Anu's sons. Anu is the head of the council. He's the most high. That's why he's called Anu, which means the most high. So he was the most high of the council. He sent his son Inki here to mine for gold. And Inki came with a group of Anunnaki. And he was the chief mineralist. He was a, like a mineralogist and a mineralist, and he mined for gold. Um, now, these group of Anunnaki were astrologers, researchers, um, in various different scientific fields. And they came here to get gold, and things were going well at first, but the process was very slow. The Anunnaki were a spoiled race of physical beings now. These were physical beings, and they were a spoiled race of beings. So they decided eventually over time, and I'm paraphrasing and telling a short story here, because there's more to it. So they decided eventually to create human beings, or what we would call human beings today, what they call Adama. According to the Sumerian text, these beings were called Adama. And the way they were getting this gold is they were taking the gold from Earth and then shipping it to the moon and then shipping it from the moon to Mars. And there was a reason for this process and why they were doing it that way. And um, so what they did was they began to, these Adama projects to create human beings, they started these projects on Mars. And um, some of the first beings that they created on Mars were a uh, group of cat-headed beings. These beings were homo sapien in shape. They had the body of humans, but they had cat heads. And this is why in ancient Kemet or Egypt or Tamare, depending on what you want to call it today, you see uh, deities that have cat heads and this is why they revere cats because the cat headed beings were actually the first beings to be created in these experiments because this is an experiment before they got to the way we look now I mean they, it was various different experiments some of them had falcon heads or bird heads various different experiments what they were doing is they were mixing animals up with the genes of what you would call homo erectus and they were mixing the genes of Homo erectus, which was the actual native of this planet. And Homo erectus is our uh, ancestor before we became Homo sapiens. And what they did is they abducted several Homo erectus, shipped them back to Mars, began this genetic experiment to create what they call Adama, or this primitive worker, who they were going to use as a slave to do their work for them. Now, Inki, when he decided to do this, um, let me mention this here, he didn't get permission from his father, which was Anu which I explained earlier. He didn't get permission from his father. Um, so his father didn't give him permission. So he did this without the consent of the Galactic Confederation. Very key here. Very key here. I want you to remember that point. Did this without the consent of the Galactic Confederation. So um, he did this on his own. Basically he was a, a very intelligent uh, Anunnaki, or what you would call Anunnaki, which is another name that the Egyptians called them, Netiru. He was a very wise guy. If you want to call him a guy, you can call him a guy. But he was a very wise extraterrestrial. So he, him, and another, a few others, um, a woman and a couple other males, decided to create these these beings. It took them some time to do it, but this was approximately 300,000 years ago. So they finally get the finished product, which was the Adama. They took this Adama, or this primitive worker, and that's what this means. Adama means primitive worker in Sumerian. And they shipped this Adama back to Earth, and he began to mine the gold for them. And he began to do all the work for them. He did all of the work for them. He built the, the uh, space stations, or what you would call pyramids, and the different complexes you see 
today. These were built by the Adamas up under the tutelage and guidance of Enki. So Enki would be your original God. And the council that he controlled was your original Elohim. He was the Yahweh of the Elohim. Enki was a Yahweh. A Yahweh means the leader. So he was the Yahweh of the Elohim. Now the term Yahweh means good and evil. So these beings are extraterrestrials. Yeah, we might call them gods, but they're good and evil. They're just like us. And what they did was they took some of 80% of their genetics, mixed it with 20% of the Homo erectus genetics, and they created what you would call us today, Homo sapiens. So we're direct heirs of these uh, higher beings, of what you call in religion God. But see, these gods were not what you think they were. They were extraterrestrials that were millions of years ahead of us, very intelligent, and they created us. And I'm not making this story up. This is not coming out of my head. This is something that the ancient Sumerians talked about. This is all in the, um, in the Sumerian tablets. None of this is made up. Zachariah Stitchin didn't make this up. For those of you that have heard this story through him, he didn't make this up. He got this from a group of extraterrestrial beings. Or, I'm sorry, he got this from a group of Sumerians who got it from a group of extraterrestrial beings. So this is like a story that goes back before the Bible, before the Torah, before all of this. So human beings were an experiment that were not supposed to exist. So once I knew finally got wind of what Inky did, he decided, no, you shouldn't have did this. This is bad. The council didn't agree with this. So let's kill them all. More or less, they agreed. Well, actually through his son Enlil, which is the brother of Inky, he decided to kill, kill the experiment, kill us all off. Kill us all off. So Enlil was actually what you would call the appointed. Um, he was over Inky. His rank is higher than Inky. Enlil's rank is higher than Inky. He never came to Earth. He just watched over this whole project in a spacecraft. So he decided to kill us all off. So when you read about the story of the flood and the flood of Noah, this story can be found in many ancient cultures in Africa. The Dogons tell this story. Um, I believe it's in South America. Um, the Sumerians told this story about the flood. And the Sumerians called Noah in the Sumerian tablets, he was called Utnam Fistim. Utnam Fistim which was the same story of Noah. This is where they got the story of Noah and the flood from. And this is when God decided to destroy man. And Noah was perfect in his generation. So what Enki did, he snuck off against the council's will and he saved Noah. Enki saved Noah. He, um, this is all in the Sumerian text. He told Noah or Utna fist him what was going to happen, what the council was planning. And he set up an ark or a DNA bank. He saved the life that he created because he had an emotional attachment now to this group of homo sapiens or humans and he saved Noah and once the flood subsided he took Noah to the center of the earth through this ark which was really a spacecraft he flew Noah and his family and you know this tribe because really this was a tribe into the center of the earth and when the water subsided he uh, took them out of the center of the earth and freed them and put you know we repopulated the planet earth again and this is what you call the second um, the second phase or second group of homo sapiens. Now in the midst of this, I'm going to point this out then I'll end this video. In the midst of this you had an um, entity, and this is what part two will be about, named what you would call Satan or the snake or the reptilian. See the reptilian was already on this planet. The reptilian was already on this planet. So when the reptilian was telling them, Adam and Eve, that they could eat of certain fruits, and things of that nature and it wouldn't kill them or harm them the reptilian had his own agenda so once the Anunnaki eventually stepped away and left Adam in charge on his own and this is when the reptilian stepped out and began to teach this group of homo sapiens uh, certain information and this is where you get your snake stories about the snake teaching Adam and Eve certain things but he had his own agenda so this is where you get your Lucifer or your Satan from from the reptilian species this is where you get your story of Satuk from in ancient Egypt, the reptilian species. So this is the true origins of how humans were created. It was an experiment. And to research this further, I suggest that you research through Sumerian, the Sumerian information. I suggest that you get Zachariah Stitchin's book called The Twelfth Planet. I suggest that you get a book called Genesis Revisited. This book will definitely inform you. It's totally factual and informative and it will inform you on what's really going on with the creation of homo sapiens and human beings. So this is our true origins.
For more information, visit my website, 13signsastrology.com. I thank you for watching. My name is Ram Hotep, and until we meet again, I'll say peace and love.